Hey guys, Stefan von Jarsfeld here with fxhippo.com. Um, today we're going to have a look at the small VFX short I did, Don't FCUK with a Mob. So it's going to be a green screen compositing tutorial. So let's have a look at what we'll be creating, if you haven't seen it already. So green screen elements and then combining some action essentials to some blood bursts from videocopilot.net. All right. So let's start from the beginning. Why not? All right. So let's go ahead and make a new composition. So you come up here to composition, new composition. Now our uh, our elements are 1080p, but we're going to make a 720p composition. So 1280 by 720. So come down here to HDV, HDTV, 720, 25 frames per second. Okay, make the background color um, a bit pinkish. Get back to that. Okay, so here's our comp. So let's rename our composition FX Hippo Green Screen Toot. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is put a background element in. So here's our background element. Um, it's quite a large photo, so you're going to have to scale it down. So drag it into your composition. And as you can see, it's huge. So scale it down. S for scale. S on the keyboard, and just scale it down to about that. Bring it up a bit. All right. Now what you want to do is bring in the green screen elements. So here are our two green screen elements um, of Phil Bernhard getting pretending to get shot. Bang. Bang. All right. And another one. There. So it's two different people, but it's actually the same person, but it's different. Okay, so let's drag those two elements onto the timeline. So above the photo, above the background element. Okay, so let's just hide those two and rename our photo background elements. Okay, and then I like that one. So that will be our first guy, so guy one. And that will be our second guy, so guy two. All right. So let's just scale these down to fit the comp a bit better. So scale. Uh, let's say that's going to be about right. Something like that. A bit smaller, maybe. 62. So S for scale on guy two. About 62 as well. Make him visible. That looks about right. Maybe he should be a bit bigger. Yeah. Something like that. All right. So let's get to the green screen compositing. So let's start. Let's go guy by guy. So let's go with guy one first. So hide guy two. All right. Zoom in a bit here. All right. Uh, let's fit. Cool. So let's come over here to effects and presets and type in key light. It's under keying. So drag key light to guy one. All right, and then you take, come up here to screen color. Which color are you going to screen? You take the color picker and you select the green closest to him. All right, so already it does a pretty good job, but as you can see, it's not great. So what we do now is come over here to final result. So what we want to view is the screen matte. So white will be what we see and black will be what we don't see and gray will be sort of in between. So gray is not really what we want. We want pure black and pure white. So you come down here to screen matte. First of all, put the screen pre-blur to 1.2. It makes it nice and smooth. I think 1.2 should be good. Yeah. All right. And then play with clip black. You see the black start becoming true black. And then play with clip white, take it down, and you'll see the white becomes pure. All right? That looks pretty good. Um, let's take it back to final result. And it's pretty clean. But when he falls, it might be a bit different. See here on the side. But we're going to be masking this as well. So it looks pretty good when he falls as well. So that should be good. It's got some shadows there, but that's all right. 
we can work with that. All right, so what I want to do is now get his final position and sort of estimate with where we're standing as well. So overall, we need a shape. Let's mask him out. So let's take the masking tool, pen tool, and turn on Roto Bezier. It makes it nice and smooth. So just draw like a nice smooth shape around. Should be good right there. It's a nice mask. All right. Now we're going to repeat this process with guy number two. All right. So both both guys have now been um, removed from their green backgrounds. Now, let's just try and blend in, blend them in with the background a bit more. So one thing that stands out is they're much more orange in the background, and the background is much brighter than the guys. So let's start and remove the orange. So let's um, select, click on guy one, effect color correction, hue and saturation. Let's just bring down the master saturation. You'll see that he starts losing the orange and that looks pretty good. And then we just click on this uh, effect, Apple C, and then go down to guy two, Apple V. So we've pasted, copy and pasted their effect. So that looks much better um, color wise, saturation wise. Now let's make the background a bit darker. So let's uh, click on the background element, effect, color correction. Let's um, let's do hue and saturation again. There are many ways you can do it, but I'll just play with the master lightness. Bring that down. Master saturation, bring it up a bit. Master lightness down. It looks all right. It's not that great. So what I want to do is uh, whip on an effect color correction curves as well and just bring that up there and bring that down there so that makes contrast a bit greater so that looks about right all right so another thing that's missing is um shadows for these guys so i found a pretty cool way to do it i'm not sure if anyone else has talked about it on youtube yet but uh i'll show you here so let's turn off guy two for now and focus on guy one. So what you need to do is make a duplicate of guy one. So command D. So it'll turn up as guy three, but you rename that guy one shadow. So then what you need to do is make guy one shadow on the bottom of guy one and make it a 3D layer, 3D layer. So then what we're gonna do is, let's get a bit of a bigger space here. What we're going to do is take the rotation tool and on the x axis rotate you'll see he start he'll start becoming like a flat sort of pancake take the arrow tool move him on along the x axis so what you pretty much need to do is um move this copy of him to the point where you think the shadow would be now the sun is coming from here in this case as you can see with the shadow here so he should be about in this area here. So let's just play around, and see what we get. So that looks pretty good, um, but obviously your shadow doesn't look like an exact copy of you. It needs to be black, right? So what we do is we, um, do the, let's just close this down to organize it. Okay, so click on guy one shadow, we go to effect, color correction, tint, and make both options black. So there we have our shadow. But um, yeah, shadows are not usually that harsh and we sort of need to match this color here. So what I like to do is click on guy one shadow, press T for opacity, and bring the opacity down to about, let's say we're right there, 59 looks good. Yeah. And then also, uh, just to make it a bit smoother, so the edges are quite rough, so you go to effect, blur and sharpen, fast blur. And just bring fast blur up to about 12. 12 would be good. All right, so now we've made a shadow for our guy. Um, but uh, if you go a bit further towards the end, when he falls, you'll see that the shadow will become a bit dodgy at some point. Here we go. The shadow is sort of in front of him now. It should be behind him. 
So what we need to do is keyframe his shadow as he falls to make it look natural that the shadow has sort of moved by itself or as it would do if you're falling. So what we need to do is guy shadow. Um, just open it all up. Oh, sorry. Guy one shadow. Open it up. Um, and then close effects. Transform. So what we need to transform is, so make a keyframe for orientation and position. Um, so we have those keyframes. And as we go along, we just need to move the shadow so it stays behind him. Again, rotation tool. So just keep playing, playing around with the, with the keyframing, and you'll eventually get a nice, a nice shadow. Again, not perfect, but it works. Cool. So then repeat that process for guy number two. All right. So now both guys have shadows as they fall. So the next step uh, to this tutorial would be adding blood effects. Now, guy two gets shot first, so let's do guy two first. Um, so just turn off guy one, both guy one. Actually, to make things a bit simpler, select guy one and guy one shadow and press shift command C. This will make a pre-composition. So call that guy one pre-comp. And then select both guy two, so guy two and guy shadow and shift command C, guy two, Comp. Done. Okay, so that organizes your timeline a bit better. Cool. So let's turn off guy one and focus on guy two. So let's look for the point where he gets shot. So let's turn it down to half. And just about there. That's where he gets shot. <laughs> All right. So um, I don't know if you guys know. Um, videocopilot.net, you probably do, but they have a really cool product called Action Essentials 2. So what Action Essentials 2 really is, it's a high definition pre-keyed action stock footage. So what you get are like flames, explosions, smoke, fire, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, and blood, which we're gonna use. Um, it only costs $99 for the, for the 720p version, so, or sorry, $100. So check it out, it's really cool, videocopilot.net forward slash products, forward slash action two forward slash. So out of the elements of Action Essentials 2, I chose some three out of the blood category. I chose blood burst six, blood burst 16, blood splat four. So we're gonna use blood burst 16. It looks a little something like this. It's kind of gross. Oh, it's like a bit of, bit of stuff coming out there. It can be cool. Alright guys, that was part one. If you're viewing this as part of a playlist, you'll be taking the part two immediately. If not, here's a link to part two for the green screen compositing tutorial with fxhippo.com.